Hello again. This is Math 1120 coming to you from the College of DuPage. And the title of this lecture is Conditional Probabilities and the General Multiplication Rule. As always, I encourage you to be an active learner with pencil and paper nearby as you watch this video. In a previous lecture, we learned that when two events are independent, the occurrence of one event has no effect on the probability of the second event. However, we cannot always assume that two events will be independent. Will the probability of being in a car accident change depending on the driving conditions? We would expect that the probability of an accident would be higher if you're driving on icy roads rather than driving on dry roads. Another more statistical example, according to data from the CDC, 33% or one third of adult men in the United States uh, are obese. So the probability is 0 0.333 that a randomly selected US adult male is obese. However, 28% of adult men aged 20 through 39 are obese compared to 40% of the adult men aged 40 through 59. So the probability is 0 0.28 that an adult male is obese given that he is in this lower age bracket and the probability is 40% that an adult male is obese given that he's aged uh, in the upper age bracket. So the probability that an adult male is obese changes depending on his age group. Therefore, obesity and age are not independent. This is called a conditional probability. It depends. So here's the notation and the definition uh, that we have. So the notation is the probability of F, and this upper slash is read given E. So this is read the probability of event F given event E is the probability the event F occurs given that the event E has occurred. So for example, the probability of being obese given that you're in this age group is 0.28, and the probability you're obese given this age group is 40%. Let's consider a problem. Suppose a single die is rolled. What is the probability the die comes up three? We've studied this before, and you certainly can answer that again. Now suppose that the die is rolled a second time, but we are told that the outcome will be an odd number. You see, we know it is an odd number. Then what is the probability that the die comes up three in the second case? So you have two questions that you're being posed with here. You know what to do. Let's see how you did. Okay, uh, well, in the first instance, the pro this is the sample space. One, two, three, four, five, six for the single die. So, And we assume everything is equally likely, so the probability of three is one over six. But in the second instance, we are told that the outcome is odd. So that means the sample space really is one, three, and five. All of these are equally likely. So the probability of three given the outcome is odd is one third. So you see, um, this is an example of the notation and the way we would do some calculations. Here's another uh, more data rich uh, problem, I suppose. So the data represents the marital status of males and females 15 years or older in the United States in 2017, and these units are in millions. Okay, so you see uh, males or females can be never married, married, uh, widowed, and if you're widowed, you're not married. They can be divorced. And if you're divorced, you're not married. And you can be separated. And so those are the categories. And those are disjoint categories. And so you put um, your data organizing it this way. And you compute some marginal distributions. OK. To find the probability that a randomly selected 15-year-old uh, or older is widowed, you say the probability of widowed is, you take the 15.2 uh, number, that's the probability of widowed, and uh, that's going to be the sum of these two, 
which gives you 15.2, divided by the grand total, which is 260.1, and you get that it's a little bit better than 5%. Now, but suppose we know that the individual is female. Does this change the probability that they are widowed? Well, let's figure out. The probability of being widowed, given that you're female, is going to be, so you're looking in the given you're female, and the probability that you're widowed is going to be 11.9 divided by 113.2. And so that is going to be uh, almost 9%. So you see uh, it really does uh, change things if you know uh, the, this conditional probability that you're talking about female because it's not the same number. And in fact, we're going to learn uh, that uh, when, when we learn that this uh, is the case, we're going to learn that it's not independent. And we could talk about reasons that might be, but uh, let's just uh, use this to now formulate what we want the definition of conditional probability to be. Okay, so this is what's called the rule here, but um, this is also a definition, I suppose. If E and F are any two events, then the probability of F given E is the probability of E and F divided by the probability of E. And that if you're just talking about numbers in a table, that's the number that is in E and F divided by the number that's in E. And that's what I did with the females and the widows. So the probability of event F occurring given the occurrence of event E is found by dividing the probability of E and F by the probability of E or by dividing the number of outcomes in E and F by the number of outcomes in E. So here's another problem for us to work, and uh, we're using the same data, but now instead of me doing it, I'm asking you to do it. So here's the data that we had before, and I want you to compute the probability that a randomly selected individual has never married, given that they are male, and compute the probability that a randomly selected individual is male, given that the individual has never married. Okay, so uh, that's your assignment, and uh, you know what to do. Let's see how you did. Okay, well, let's see. So we wanted to find out the probability of never married given you're male, so you're in the male category and never married, so it's going to be 46.0 over... 126.9, you go over here and you see that that's about 36%, a little bit better than <clears throat> 36%. Now in B, it's a different thing though. In B, it says, what's the probability you're male given that you're never married? So we're, we're in the never married column, and if you're never married, then that's going to be 46 divided by 86.1, and we get over half. So you see these two numbers are different. So you see the probability that a randomly selected uh, individual is male, given that they're married, is this. Now there's a difference between those two because they're asking different questions. So you see here it is never married given male, here it is male never married. So it matters and those two are not always the same and in fact usually they are not the same. So here's another problem for you to consider. Suppose that I give you some data, 12.7% of all births are preterm. Now the gestation period of pregnancy is considered to be uh, somewhat less than uh, 37 weeks. So preterm means you don't take um, 37 weeks. And also that 0.22%, uh, that's not many, of all births resulted in a preterm baby who weighed eight pounds, 13 ounces or more. That's a pretty heavy baby. Uh, what is the probability that a randomly selected baby weighs 8 uh, pounds, 13 ounces or more, given that the baby is preterm? And then it asks, moreover, is that unusual? Well, you know what to do. And we'll see how you do when we go to the next video. But for now, now more than ever, time is precious. Each day must count. Do the math, it will make you strong. And now, more than ever, take care of yourself and of each other. May God bless you all.